All right, so this is just a really quick tutorial on, you know, kind of getting started uh, with Surge, Surge 101. Um, basic, the basic idea with Surge, so you have two scenes, which are basically, com you know, dupe or two different synthesis engines. Um, I'm just using scene A right now in single mode. And each scene has three oscillators. Uh, and then the oscillators are sent through a signal chain which can have a bunch of modulation attached to it in all sorts of different places with a bunch of different, a whole variety of sources of modulation. And then that all gets sent through the signal chain, which you know is then mixed. Uh, scenes A and B are then mixed. If, if you're using dual scene mode, uh, scenes A and B are mixed uh, in a certain way, you know, with the, some insert effects and some send effects and some master effects. And then that goes out and that becomes the sound that you hear. Uh, so first things first is the oscillators. Um, you know, best the best way to learn the oscillators is really just to play with them. Uh, there's the this classic oscillator, which you know can, you can do a square. You can modulate the pulse width. It's got a unison parameter on it, so you can you can get some uh, you know, nice sounds there. Right, uh, so there's and then there's three oscillators, and those are sent into. Uh, those are mixed uh, with this little miniature mixer down here, and there's a, a diagram up here that shows how the mixing is being done, and you can see it's just one, two, three, and then the ring modulations and some noise, all getting mixed according to this mixer down here. So each one has a volume. Let me let me do some stuff with oscillator two. Oh yeah, I forgot to go over wavetables. Wavetables are really important as well. Or uh, you know, Surge has really good wavetable functionality. It's a bit of a pain to make our own wavetables, but I've, I've made a couple of my own. Uh, so I will use our harms, which is a bunch of random sine harmonics. Uh, so if I unmute oscillator two, uh, you can sweep through the wavetable. There's there, and there's a bunch in here. Um, saw detuned, right? And then it's got a bunch of other parameters, and there's a bunch of different oscillator types here as well. Um, so you can unmute and solo, and you know, change the levels of all all the all three oscillators, and also some ring modulation between them as well. I can you can hear what that sounds like. A little gross with the oscillators I've got right now, but. Uh, that's that's there for, uh, and then there's also just a noise source. You can mix that in as well, and it's all it's all mixed again according to this diagram. There you can also do FM between the oscillators. Uh, there's three algorithms here to choose from, so you can have two and three modulating one, and then the amount of modulation is controlled by this parameter here. Uh, so that all gets mixed together. And then that gets sent now through the filters. So you can see they also have a nice diagram up here that shows how the filters are configured. Uh, so there's search has two filters, one and two, which are right here. And by default, the this the mix here gets sent through filter one, then the wave shaper, and then filter two, and then the amplitude. Uh, modulation and then I don't I don't know what this is but it's in there and then there's a bunch of other different filter configurations you can choose from as well all different sounds I tend to just use this one but you know those are there if you want them uh, and then the filters there's a bunch of different filter algorithms you can choose from some of these even have multiple like for like the bandpass has uh, four different uh, let me get out a saw uh, the bandpass has four different bandpass algorithms to choose from. And it's got a cutoff and resonance. And then there's, you know, filter two. Um, you can do a second, you know, if you want to do like a sample and hold. Right. Uh, you can also key track the filters with this down here. Oh wait, okay, that's probably what this is, is this high pass. Okay, yeah, that's what that is. And then there's the wave shaper here. Uh, you can key track the track the filters uh, and then there's a filter envelope which can modulate the 
the filters by different amounts. That's what this is here. Uh, so, and then there's the amplitude modulator or am amplitude envelope, which, you know, is ample. So, you know, pretty basic sort of soft synth stuff up here, but where Surge becomes really powerful is the uh, modulation uh, down here. So these are all the different uh, modulation, you know, sources of modulation you can choose from. There are six voice LFOs, six scene LFOs, uh, velocity key track, you know. You can also use the amplitude and filter envelopes. You can reuse those for modulation. I do that a lot with the filter envelope because sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm just not modulating the filters and I, I need an envelope. Uh, and then there's these eight macro uh, macro modulation sources as well. So the LFOs, oh yeah, so the way you use these is like, let's say I wanted to use the MIDI mod wheel to modulate the, uh, let's, let's do the, turn off the key tracking. And let's use that to modulate the sample and hold filter. I'm gonna dis disable the bandpass. Uh, so what we can do is we choose our, our, our lowest value and then we click on that to make it green. We select it and then click on it to make it green. And then we uh, slide out the param you know, we select the parameter and then we slide it out like we're gonna change it, right? And so what this is, is now the mod wheel at the lowest, when the mod wheel is lowest, the filter is down here. And when the mod wheel is highest, the filter is up here. So it sounds like. So that uh, lets you can put the mod wheel, you know, all over the place, and then you have uh, MIDI precision with modulating your various parameters. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of using the mod wheel for that reason, and of course, there's a ton of others. You can also, you know, put these macro uh, modulators on things, and then you can change a whole bunch of. Well, I didn't pick anything that's doing doing anything, but you get the idea. Uh, and then you can put LFOs on things. So let me put this this LFO on the pitch. And you can even put LFOs on other LFOs. So the way you do that is you choose, let's make this LFO really slow. Actually, let's do a sample and hold for that one, a nice fast sample and hold. And put, so we click it to make it green and then we click the orange down arrow, right? So the orange down arrow is showing that this LFO is being shown in this orange section down here. And this green button is showing that we're currently choosing what parameters we want to modulate with LFO2. So we're going to we're using LFO2, we're going to use that to modulate the rate of LFO1. And LFO1 is modulating the pitch, right? And so now now it sounds like this. We can uh, make LFO2 faster. So that's that. Um, and one final thing I want to mention, I, I t mentioned it very quickly in, in passing at the beginning, but there are two scenes, Surge has two scenes. So s we've been playing with scene A this whole time, uh, but there's also scene B, which is currently still at the initial patch. Um, if we put this in dual mode, then both scenes will play at the same time, right? Right? So what we can do, one, one thing I do a lot uh, is I, I copy the first scene and then I paste that to scene B and I have it in dual mode and then I pan B all the way to the right and I pan A all the way to the left. And we've got some randomness here and this is, um, this randomness will be different. The sample and hold specifically will be different for each scene. So now both of our oscillator, both of our scenes are going to have different rates for this first oscillator. Uh, and they're both hard pan now. So you get, you know, nice wide stereo sound. And also, I, we're, I believe we're also using the um, unison on those. And the unison is also different per scene. So those will be, uh, uh, it's a really quick way. If I put this back in the initial preset, something I do a lot, 
um, let's do a wave table like the the sign yeah I'll, I'll do that I'll go through making a, a nice pad patch so uh, wave table and then we choose either sign which is just harmonics or sign octaves I'm just gonna I'm gonna do sign I'm gonna put the mod wheel I'm gonna use the mod wheel to modulate the morph just a little bit so that lets us go poke up into some of those um, higher harmonics uh, surge will do aliasing on the wave tables it's a thing they do on purpose for you know legacy reasons so you can hear the high frequencies up there and I'm just going to cut those off with a this uh, I, I think four pole 24 decibels per octave or something like that low pass set pretty high and key tracked right something around there so now it's just our sign and then we can turn our mod wheel to get different morphs for that then I'm going to crank up the unison I'm going to give it, I guess, three, a spread of maybe 10 cents. Actually, let's go more. Let's go for 20. Uh, then the amplitude envelope, you know, you got to get that nice pad envelope. Turn that down a bit. Right. Uh, and now do the hard pan trick, right? So we copy A to B, put it in dual mode, pan A to the left, pan B to the right. Yeah, just a quick little pad sound there. Uh, and that, I'm trying to think, there was something else I wanted to cover that I didn't get to. Oh, a lot of these parameters can be right-clicked. You might have seen me doing that a couple times. Pretty much everything can be right-clicked. Um, there's different options in there. Some of them is, is pretty, um, you know, normal, like this parameter, you know. But, like the pitch parameters, you can extend the range. So this pitch right now can only uh, go up to seven or down to seven. I'm gonna go back to the initial patch again. This can only go up to seven or down to minus seven, but you can extend the range and you can go all the way up, all the way down. Uh, the wavetable uh, wave morph parameter can snap. Uh, and then for modulation, if you have a bunch of modulation, you know, going on, so the mod wheel is modulating everything now. Uh, you can right click on the parameter to see what it's modulating and how much, and you can right click on a parameter that's being modulated and you can see what's modulating it. Which as far as I know, that's the only way to really explore um, how the routing is set up. But, you know, in my experience, it's it's more than good enough. You can clear them and you can, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and that is pretty much, that's the quick rundown of Surge. Um, yeah, and like I said at the very beginning, the Surge manual talks a lot about, um, you know, because Surge manual is worth a read. Um, it's goes very in depth and everything and they've got a list of like what all these different what all the different filters you can choose from are just because there's so many in here um, there's this comb filter the sample and hold di different kinds of comb filter you know the, the specifics of the signal chain you know there's, there's all sorts of stuff in that manual I didn't even, I didn't even cover the effects but there's different effects in here you can choose from uh, you can also modulate if you want to modulate the rate of this phaser with the mod wheel, you can do that. All right, there's just there's just all sorts of crazy stuff you can do um, with this VST. Can't believe it's free. It's very good. Uh, all right, that is about all I wanted to talk to you today. Hopefully, you found that useful. Uh, see you next time.